Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is Saira Mujtaba with the Midday News. The headlines. Public and private sector COVID vaccination centers to operate on all days this month including gazetted holidays. Over 6 crore 87 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine administered in the country so far. Hectic campaigning going on in poll bound states of West Bengal, Assam, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Union Territory of Puducherry. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses rally in Madurai in Tamil Nadu. Government releases 4608 crore rupees to states for providing grant in aid to local bodies. Three terrorists killed in an encounter in Kakapora area of Pulwama district of Jammu and Kashmir. External Affairs Minister S J Shankar says India is committed to further build the momentum of regional cooperation under BIMSTEC framework. Good Friday commemorating the day of crucifixion of Jesus Christ being observed with solemnity. And in tennis, defending champion Ashley Barty to meet Canada's Bianca Andreescu in the women's singles final of Miami Open. As the number of covid cases is on the rise again we appeal to our listeners not to lower the guard take all the precautions and all those above 45 years to get vaccinated without any hesitation stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps wear a face mask maintain two gaz ki doori for social distancing focus on hand and face hygiene and now the news in detail In a significant step to exponentially expand the country-wide vaccination drive, the center has decided to operationalize both public and private sector COVID vaccination centers on all days this month. The center has written to all the states and UTs today and asked them to make necessary arrangements to provide COVID vaccination in these centers on all days of the month including gazetted holidays. This step has been taken after detailed deliberations with the states and UTs to optimally utilize all COVID vaccination centers across the public and private sectors to ensure rapid increase in the pace and coverage of COVID vaccination. This decision is in line with the graded and proactive approach employed by the government of India along with the states and UTs for COVID-19 vaccination. Meanwhile COVID-19 vaccination for above 45 years is gaining momentum. India's immunization drive which began on January the 16th is the world's largest vaccination program. Healthcare and frontline workers got inoculated first. Then it was extended to people over 60 years of age and people with comorbidities. And from yesterday onwards people above the age of 45 and without any comorbidities are being given the jabs. The center had also earlier asked eligible citizens to register on the Covin portal or Aragya Setu app and get vaccinated as soon as possible. People can also go to their nearest vaccination center after 3 p.m. for on-site registration with any identity document. If a beneficiary has taken an online appointment for vaccination on Covin, then there is no need to take any further appointment at private or public hospitals. With this move, the government is aiming to ramp up its inoculation drive in the country. Air News spoke to few beneficiaries over 45 to know their experience. Anil Kumar, who took his first jab, said it was hassle-free. The experience was really good, and I didn't find any complications after vaccination. And the arrangement and systems in the max packet was perfect, and really it is appreciable. Another beneficiary, Ravi Kumar, said he was able to resume daily work immediately after the first vaccine shot. I'm Ravi Kumar. I took the jab in the morning today. it was covaxin i took it from a government center it was perfectly organized there i went there within half an hour they injected me and made me wait for half an hour and then they made me go home i'm feeling perfectly normal there's no side effect at all i feel so good that i'm protected against covid and i call upon all the citizens of the country to take the jab at the earliest and be safe and make the country also safe as the vaccination drive is getting wider with the passage of time including more and more numbers of people india's largest vaccination program is set to cross new milestones every day with anand chaturvedi sobhagya kar air news delhi over 6 crore 87 lakh doses of covid-19 vaccines have been administered to the beneficiaries in the country so far the health and family welfare ministry today informed 
that more than 36,71,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered in the last 24 hours. The country is witnessing a continuous rise in daily new cases and deaths due to COVID-19. According to the Health Ministry, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Chhattisgarh, Kerala, Punjab and Madhya Pradesh together account for over 80% of the total active cases in the country. The Health Ministry said that more than 81,000 new cases were reported in the country in the last 24 hours, taking the cumulative positive cases to over 1 crore 23 lakhs. A total of 469 deaths were also reported in the country in the last 24 hours, taking the toll to over 1,63,000 across the country. The active caseload is also continuously rising due to a sudden spike in the cases reported from various states. At present, there are more than 6,14,000 active cases in the country, which comprises 5% of the total positive cases. Amid the rising new cases, the recovery rate has declined to 93.67%. The ministry informed that more than 50,000 people have recovered from the infection within the last 24 hours. Madhya Pradesh yesterday reported 2,546 fresh COVID cases, while 1,573 patients were discharged from hospitals. More from our Bhopal correspondent. The COVID fatality count rose to 3,998 as 12 patients died due to the infection yesterday. Indore reported 638 new cases while Bhopal reported 499 cases. The active cases in both the cities are more than 4,000. Meanwhile, vaccination drive is being conducted smoothly in the state to boost the vaccination drive by easing facilities for the people. Indore administration has decided to observe three days as vaccination mahotsav in the city on April Second, third, and fourth. Puja Pivardhan, AIR News, Bhopal. In Gujarat, more than 4,54,000 people were vaccinated yesterday. With this, the vaccination of 60,65,682 persons have been completed till now. Our Ahmedabad correspondent reports that the state government has decided to cover all the migrant workers in the state under the vaccination drive. Out of 4,54,638 persons vaccinated yesterday, 3,69,262 have taken first dose. Large number of people are turning up for the vaccination following the government's decision to vaccinate all above the age of 45. Meanwhile, the state government has decided to cover the people of other states under the state vaccination drive. This was decided in a core committee meeting held last evening, chaired by the Chief Minister Vijay Rupani. The district collectors and municipal commissioners of Ahmedabad, Surat and Kutch have been instructed to hold special vaccination camps in the areas of migrant laborers. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. In Bihar, a record number of over 1.81 lakh people were administered COVID-19 vaccine yesterday. Overall, more than 30 lakh 16,000 people have been vaccinated in the state so far. Health Minister Mangal Pandey said vaccination is being done at 2,200 session sites throughout the state. Number of session sites will be increased to 5,000 to facilitate the vaccination process. Mr. Pandey said, though the cases have increased in Bihar in the past few days, the situation is under control compared to other states. The state has witnessed a spike in active cases of COVID-19 as they have mounted to 1,907 with reporting of 488 more positive cases yesterday. Maharashtra Chief Minister Udhav Thakre has convened a high-level meeting this evening. Our correspondent reports that he is likely to announce strict restrictions in the state in the backdrop of continuous rise in the number of COVID-19 cases in the state. Similarly, Deputy Chief Minister Ajit Pawar also held a meeting to review the situation in Pune and announce the necessary measures to contain the pandemic. Strict restrictions in Pune were announced after the meeting and hotels, pubs and restaurants, religious places, theatres and halls will remain closed for the next seven days. A report. Continuous steep rise in number of COVID-19 patients in Maharashtra has increased the worries of the authorities and the state government. Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre will be taking a review of the situation in the high-level meeting in Mumbai this evening. Although many of the ministers in the government and MVA leaders are not in the favor of complete lockdown in the state due to the adverse effects of it on the economy and on the poor people, especially on migrant workers and marginal sections of the society. State Relief and Rehabilitation Minister Vijay Wadetewar has said that the government will neither impose a complete lockdown nor 
नॉन स्टॉप द सबर्बन लोकल सर्विसेस इन मुंबई बट वेरी वेरी स्ट्रिक्ट मेजर्स आर ऑन द एनवेल एंड डिटेल डिस्कशन विल टेक प्लेस ऑन दिस इश्यू इन द मीटिंग इन द इवनिंग गार्डियन मिनिस्टर ऑफ मुंबई असलम शेख हैज ऑल्सो हाईलाइटेड द इश्यू ऑफ द लॉस ऑफ इनकम ऑफ होटल्स रेस्टोरेंट्स एंड स्मॉल इटरीज एंड मार्जिनल पीपल वर्किंग इन दीज सेक्टर्स शैलेश पाटिल एआर न्यूज मुंबई Cricket legend Sachin Tendulkar was admitted to a hospital in Mumbai today. Sachin informed about the development on Twitter this morning saying that he has been hospitalized as a matter of precaution under medical advice and hopes to return home sooner. He has also wished the 10th anniversary of India's ODI World Cup win in 2011. Sachin Tendulkar had tested positive for COVID-19 on Saturday. In Telangana over 13 lakh 26000 people have been vaccinated so far this includes those around 4 lakh 71000 people who are above 60 years and over 2 lakh 74000 people who are above 45 years of age the state reported 965 fresh covid-19 cases taking the total number of cases to 3 lakh 9741 312 more persons recovered from the covid during the same time With this Telangana has currently over 6100 active covid cases out of which over 2200 are in home isolation meanwhile five more persons succumbed to covid-19 and other comorbidities in the state taking the toll to 1706 talking to AIR news aims director Randeep Guleria appealed to people to get vaccinated हमें टीकाकरण से दो चीजें करनी है एक अपना मृत्यु दर बिल्कुल कम रखना है हम ये चाहते हैं कि कम से कम कोविड के कारण डेथ्स हो और टीकाकरण अगर हम 45 साल से उम्र के लोगों के लिए करेंगे तो उनमें उससे डेथ रेट भी कम होगा क्योंकि हम जानते हैं कि कोविड जो है उसकी मोर्टेलिटी या जो हम डेथ की बात करते हैं वो एज के साथ लिंक्ड है जैसे जैसे लोगों की उम्र बढ़ती है और उनको कोविड हो तो उनको सीरियस कोविड इन्फेक्शन के और कोविड के कारण मृत्यु के चांसेस बढ़ जाते हैं तो एक इस टीकाकरण के इस नए दौर से हम और लोगों की जान बचा पाएंगे क्योंकि टीकाकरण के बाद ये निश्चय है कि उनको लेस सीवियर डिजीज होगी इतनी गंभीर बीमारी नहीं होगी कि उनको आईसीयू में या वेंटिलेटर की जरूरत पड़े यू आर लिस्निंग टू द मिड डे न्यूज ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो रिमाइंड ऑफ द हेडलाइन बिफोर वी मूव ऑन पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट सेक्टर कोविड वैक्सीनेशन सेंटर टू ऑपरेट ऑन ऑल डेज दिस मास इंक्लूडिंग गजेटेड हॉलीडेज Over 6 crore 87 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccines administered in the country so far. Hectic campaigning going on in poll-bound states of West Bengal, Assam, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Union Territory of Puducherry. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses rally in Madurai in Tamil Nadu. Government releases 4,608 crore rupees to states for providing grant in aid to local bodies. Three terrorists killed in an encounter in Kakapura area of Pulwama district of Jammu and Kashmir. External Affairs Minister S Jay Shankar says India is committed to further build the momentum of regional cooperation under BIMSTEC framework. Good Friday commemorating the day of crucifixion of Jesus Christ being observed with solemnity. And in tennis, defending champion Ashley Barty to meet Canada's Bianca Andreescu in the women's singles final of Miami Open. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. चलो मिलकर एक शुरुआत करें चलो एक फैसला आज करें मास्क नहीं तो टोकेंगे कोरोना को रोकेंगे चलो एक इरादा करते हैं चलो कुछ वादा करते हैं मास्क नहीं तो टोकेंगे कोरोना को Welcome back to the Midday News on All India Radio. After the completion of polling for the first and second phase assembly elections in Assam and West Bengal, focus of campaigning has now been shifted to the third phase of polls in the two states. Polling for the third phase will be held on 6th of this month for 40 seats in Lower Assam and 31 seats in West Bengal. On the same day, single phase polling will also take place for Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry assembly elections. Leaders of various parties are holding rallies in these states to woo the voters. In Tamil Nadu, senior BJP leader and Prime Minister Narendra Modi slammed the opposition Congress and the DMK for posing as defenders of Tamil culture. 
Campaigning at the public meeting for the NDA Alliance parties at Madurai, Mr. Modi said there were several issues like Jalli Qatar and reclassifying of Devendra Kulla Velalar and in such issues, both DMK and Congress did nothing and even had opposed them. He listed out the achievements of both the AIADMK at the state and the BJP government at the center. Guided by the mantras of Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas, the NDA government is working to bring a positive change in the lives of 130 crore Indians. For Tamil Nadu and especially Southern Tamil Nadu, we want to focus on infrastructure, irrigation, investment. From the Red Fort last year, I had said that the government of India is going to spend rupees 100 lakh crore for creation of next generation infrastructure. This will cater to the needs of not only the present but also the future generations. Meanwhile, DMK leader M.K. Stalin, while electioneering at Aravakuruchi, said that neither he nor his party workers are scared of the IT raids. He criticized the BJP government for trying to gag the opposition parties out of political vendetta. Senior BJP leader and Home Minister Amit Shah is in Chennai city as part of electioneering. State Congress President K.S. Alagiri also criticized the BJP for trying to malign opposition parties by conducting IT raids. The Income Tax Department conducted raids in the residences of several DMK members including the residences of daughter of M.K. Stalin at Chennai this morning. Paramilitary personnel could be seen outside the residence as IT officials were conducting raids. Houses and office establishments of party candidates Mohan, Karur candidate Sandil Balaji and some others were also raided in the state. Police officials had to converse peacefully to disperse the party workers gathered in front of the houses where raids were conducted. Cases were booked against AIADMK party workers on money distribution. The unaccounted money kept for distribution was seized by the authorities. With Muthi and Deeksha, Joy, AIA News, Chennai. The Prime Minister will be in Kerala in the afternoon to campaign for NDA. He will address a rally in Konni, Patanamthitta district. Security has been beefed up in the area ahead of the PM's visit. Later, he will proceed to Kanyakumari in Tamar Nadu for the Lok Sabha Bipole and also for six assembly constituencies in the district. In Assam, BJP star campaigner and national president J.P. Nadda addressed a rally at Patachar Kuchi for state BJP president Ranjit Kumar Das. Mr. Nadda alleged that the Congress is a communal force. The party is contesting elections in Assam with Badruddin Ajmal's AIUDF. Mr. Nadda termed Congress leader Rahul Gandhi as a political tourist. He further said that the party would give employment to one lakh youths by March next year if voted to power again. Other leaders, including Chief Minister Sarbanan Sonwal, NEDA convener Heman Viswa Sarma, BPF Chief Hagrama Mahilari, State Congress President Ripun Bora and AIUDF President Badruddin Ajmal are also holding rallies and roadshows to woo the voters. BJP's National President J.P. Nadda will campaign for parties. State President Ranjit Kumar Das at Patachar Kuchi today. Union Minister Narendra Singh Tomar, Chief Minister Sarbanan Sonwal and NEDA convener Hemant Biswa Sarma will also address rallies for BJP candidates. Congress General Secretary Priyanka Gandhi Vadra will campaign at Gwalpara, Golak Ganj and Sarukhetri today. State Congress President Ripun Bora, MP Gaurav Gogoi and Pradyut Bordoloi as well as AIUDF President Badruddin Ajmal will also campaign today. In West Bengal, senior BJP leader and Union Home Minister Amit Shah has said that it was evident from yesterday that TMC leader Mamata Banerjee is losing at Nandigram. Addressing a public meeting at Sital Kuchi in Kuch Bihar today, Mr. Shah said that on 2nd of May, Didi will be ousted from power. Accusing Mamata Banerjee of doing injustice to North Bengal, he claimed that now she will be looking for another seat for contesting in the election. Mr. Shah also claimed that if voted to power, BJP will take up lots of development work, including building an AIMS at Kuch Bihar. On the other hand, addressing a rally in the same district at Dean Hatta constituency, TMC Supremo Mamata Banerjee refuted the claim of Mr. Shah and said that she will be winning from Nandi Gram. The TMC leader has also accused the BJP of doing divisive politics. 
She criticized the central government for privatizing PSUs and asked the people of Kuch Bihar to vote for her party in order to ensure development and secularism in the state. The Election Commission has ordered for a re-poll at polling station number 149 in Assam's Ratawari Assembly constituency in Karim Ganj district. The decision is taken after reports surfaced yesterday about an incident of an EVM being carried in a private vehicle after polling was completed. Four poll officials, including the presiding officer responsible for the labs, have been suspended by the Election Commission. The Commission has informed that the EVM in question has been recovered and upon examination it has been found to be with its seal intact and without any damage. However, a decision for a re-poll at the polling station at a later date has been taken as a measure of precaution. The Commission has also sought a report from the Special Observer in this regard. The Centre will soon roll out a unique land parcel identification number system in the country, allotting distinct IDs for each land parcel. The system has already been successfully carried out in a number of states on pilot basis. This was mentioned in a report presented by the Standing Committee on Rural Development in the Lok Sabha last month. In the unique land parcel identification number system, there will be a unique ID for each land parcel. The unique ID will be of 14 digits. It would be based on the geo-reference coordinate of vertices of the parcel. This would be of international standard and in compliance with the Electronic Commerce Code Management Association standard and Open Geospatial Consortium standards. It will provide compatibility so that all states can adopt it easily. It will enable in keeping the land records always up to date. A link of all property transactions would get established. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has stressed upon promoting and propagating the mother tongue. He released a book entitled Neelima Marani, My Mother, My Hero by Member of Parliament Professor Achyut Samanta in the Raj Bhavan in Bhubaneswar today. The Vice President said, no matter what and where we are, we should always remember our Matri Murti, Matri Bhumi and Matri Bhasha. The Vice President is on a two-day visit to Odisha. The Finance Ministry has released an amount of 4,608 crore rupees to the state for providing grant and aid to the local bodies. The grants are both for the rural local bodies and urban local bodies. The grants have been released as per the recommendations of the 15th Finance Commission. In the last financial year, the centre released a sum of 87,460 crore rupees to 28 states as local body grants. The grants to the rural local bodies will be partly utilised for sanitation and maintenance of open defecation-free status and supply of drinking water, rainwater harvesting and water recycling. In Jammu and Kashmir, at least three terrorists were killed in an encounter by the security forces in Kakapura area of South Kashmir's Pulwama district this morning. The operation was still underway a short while ago. Talking exclusively to AIR, IGP Kashmir Vijay Kumar said, कल सिनेगर नगर सिनेगर में बीजेपी के एक लीडर के यहाँ एक हुआ था जिसमें पुलिस का एक सिपाही मार्टर्ड हुए उसके बाद हम लोग उसको फॉलोअप करते गए और लास्ट में इवनिंग में इन जनरेट हुआ तो काकपुर में पुलिस आर्मी के आदमी मिलकर कॉर्डन डाला रात में चार बजे फायरिंग शुरुआत हुई और अगली मॉर्निंग फिर से फायरिंग हुआ इन काउंटर में तीन हार्डकोर टेरिस्ट एलिटी के मारे गए हैं ये वही है जो कल बीजेपी के एक लीडर के यहाँ अटैक किया था वहाँ बरामदगी हुआ है हथियार हुआ है एक के फोर्टिस राइफल हुआ है पिस्टल हुआ है एसएलआर हुआ है the external affairs minister dr s j shankar has said that india remains committed to further building the momentum of regional cooperation under the bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral technical and economic cooperation bimstech framework and make the organization stronger vibrant more effective and result oriented he delivered a statement at the 17th bimstech ministerial meeting being held virtually yesterday dr j shankar expressed confidence that bimstech would scale new heights in the times to come with the collective efforts and spirit of cooperation. India's ambassador to China, Vikram Misri, interacted with the representatives of Indian industry in Shanghai yesterday. He will also launch India at 75 celebrations today in Shanghai. The event was attended by more than 30 representatives representing eight sectors such as textiles, pharma, electronics and manufacturing. More from our Beijing correspondent.
And Dr. Misri discussed the issues related to business risk in the fluid current geopolitical scenario. He also discussed the general issues faced by the businesses such as flights and visa for the Indian employees who want to come back to China. I mean a geopolitical tussle including tensions in technology and trade with the Western countries led by the US. Chinese companies and businesses are facing sanctions on various counts. I mean the border tensions in Ladakh, India had tightened regulatory requirements last year for investments from China and has banned more than 200 Chinese apps. Also due to the COVID-19 pandemic, global trade flows have been slowed, although there has still been strong demand for medical equipment and supplies, which has largely contributed to China becoming India's top trade partner in 2020. Anshman Mishra for AIR News, Beijing. In Taiwan, 36 people have been killed and more than 70 were injured when a train derailed in a tunnel. The fire department said in a statement that the train traveling to Tairang, carrying around 350 people, came off the rails in a tunnel just north of Huelian, causing some carriages to hit the wall of the tunnel. Rescuers struggled to reach the crushed carriages. Good Friday is being observed today. It commemorates the day of crucifixion of Jesus Christ. On this day, Jesus Christ sacrificed his life out of love for everyone and while atoning for the sins of humanity. On the occasion of Good Friday, people wish one another strength and happiness. However, due to the recent surge in COVID-19, gatherings on Good Friday may not be possible. Easter celebrations will begin on the following Sunday on 4th of April. Vice President M. Venkayanayadu in a tweet today said that Good Friday reminds us of the supreme sacrifice of Jesus Christ who dedicated his entire life to the service of humanity and spread the message of love, compassion and truth. On this day, Vice President appealed to all to emulate Jesus Christ's teachings and follow the path shown by him. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that Good Friday reminds us about the struggles and sacrifices of Jesus Christ. In a tweet today, Mr. Modi said, Jesus Christ is a perfect embodiment of compassion who was devoted to serving the needy and healing the sick. On to sports now. In Miami Open Tennis Tournament, defending champion Ashley Barty is to meet Canada's Bianca Andreescu in the women's singles final of Miami Open tomorrow. In a semi-final match, the eighth-seeded Bianca Andreescu fought back from a breakdown twice in the third set to beat number 23 seed Maria Sakkari of Greece 7-6, 3-6, 7-6 in a rain-delayed match. Earlier, defending champion and world number one Ashley Barty comfortably defeated Elena Svitolina 6-3, 6-3 in the semis to seal her berth to the final. The Australian had been 1-5 previously against Svitolina but took charge with two early breaks and used her strong serve and deep slices to keep the Ukrainian on the defensive. On the men's side, 26-seeded Hubert Hurkaz of Poland earned his first semi-final berth in a top-level ATP event by rallying past number 2-seeded Stefano Sitsipa to 6-6-3-6-4. Now let us take a look at the weather today. The national capital Delhi has mainly clear sky. Minimum temperature was 16 degrees Celsius. Maximum temperature may go up to 34 degrees Celsius. Mumbai with a mainly clear sky is expected to have a maximum of 34 degrees Celsius. Minimum was recorded at 23 degrees Celsius. Chennai and Kolkata will also have mainly clear sky. In Chennai, minimum temperature was 29 degrees, while maximum is expected to be around 40 degrees Celsius. Srinagar will have a mainly clear sky. Minimum temperature was 4 degrees. Maximum is expected to be 22 degrees Celsius. Jammu with a mainly clear sky will see the temperature rising up to nearly 31 degrees Celsius from a minimum of 13 degrees. Leh may have a maximum temperature of 30, 10 degrees Celsius amid a mainly clear sky. The minimum was minus 4 degrees. Gilgit is expected to have the maximum of 25 degrees Celsius amid mainly clear sky. Minimum was recorded at 11 degrees. Muzaffarabad will have a mainly clear sky. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Public and private sector COVID vaccination centers to operate on all days this month, including gazetted holidays. Over 6 crore 87 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine administered in the country so far. Hectic campaigning going on in poll-bound states of West Bengal, Assam, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Union Territory of Puducherry. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses rally in Madurai in Tamil Nadu. Government releases 4,608 crore rupees to states for providing grant in aid to local bodies. Three terrorists killed in an encounter in Kakapura area of Pulwama district of Jammu and Kashmir. 
External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar says India is committed to further build the momentum of regional cooperation under BIMSTEC framework. Good Friday commemorating the day of crucifixion of Jesus Christ being observed with solemnity. And with that, we end the midday news.